Good afternoon. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me today. I am Jody Truman, Financial Specialist with Child Nutrition. Today we'll be looking at one method to track your child nutrition revenue and expenses. This method will transition to your annual financial report that is completed in CNP Web yearly. By using this worksheet with your detailed account summary from your business office, will help you maintain financial accountability with your child nutrition program. All child nutrition funds should be reported separately in the district's or sponsor's accounting software. Department of Education provides MEFs numbers for each of our revenue streams to help with this process. You should work with your business office on how your expenses are recorded in your accounting system. When reviewing revenue and expenses, this process must be done by <clears throat> the food service department. Typically, this is the food service director. The business office can be included, but there must be a division of duties for the program's integrity. We encourage you to work together as a team in this process. The financial worksheet we have provided can be found on our website under financial and then financial reporting. You will, you will save this Excel document to your computer and maintain the worksheet from there. I just spoke briefly about uh, contacting your business manager to get a detailed uh, account revenues, revenue and expenses. Um, listing. This is just one example of a district's revenue accounting summary. Please note that the one circled um, as revenue is broken down by each program. Any federal money received must start with a four. And I've circled those. It says subsidy, lunch, free, SNP, and then um, like this one right here, four, five, five, four. Um, the main ones start with a three. As you can see right here, breakfast reduced state, and you have the state to let you know that that is the state, um, state funds, it starts with a three. This here um, is the MEFS revenue codes. Um, and I have, um, this is also on our website. Um, you can get that there. <clears throat> you have the MEFS revenue uh, numbers um, on the side. The state of Maine funds are here. This description is actually what's on your check or your um, de uh, the detail that comes with your check, uh, subsidy check. Um, so you can see each one of them that does say state has state in the word when it comes to state of Maine funds. I do want to note that for this year only, and actually next year as well, the produce, the federally funded local produce that you're, in, um, that you're putting in your um, reimbursement is actually federal funds. And that does have a federal number, um, as you can see right here. But the main local produce, um, is has a three. So right now the main local produce is coming in a separate check. It's not being included in your in the CNP web um, system, which this is different than what we've had in the past. The worksheet that we'll be talking about is separated by month. It can be filled out at your convenience, whether it's um, monthly, quarterly, um, yearly, <laughs> best practice would be monthly. It's much easier to make sure everything matches um, rather than at the end of the year, finding out you have a mistake in March and have to go back through many months to fix. The yearly tab, which is highlighted in blue here, um, will compile all months together for you to complete the financial report in CNP Web. And as a reminder, this the CNP Web annual report is done by the by September first. This is usually done after 
um, all the uh, journal entries are completed uh, by the business office that closes out the year. That's why we give you till September to get that completed. These are all the programs, child nutrition programs listed in the worksheet. The programs that, that you're participating in are the ones you'll be reporting on. Note that SFSP reporting is from the previous school year. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, the summer seamless supper waiver, we are not using it, that at this time, but it is listed on the spreadsheet. And this is the income section of the spreadsheet of the worksheet that we're gonna be talking about. You will, you will be reporting income based on these line titles. Sales to children. This would be the money students pay for a reimbursable meal. The only schools that might have amounts listed here are private schools. The a la carte column with sales to children would be like a second meal, extra milk, or any smart snack compliant foods. And that's right here, the a la carte. So on the sales to children, you normally would not have any school lunch because all meals are at no charge. Um, the same with breakfast. Um, and kids don't typically pay for the snacks. Um, special milk, that is very, that's, um, set aside for those schools that do not participate in the National School Lunch Program. Um, there won't, I think we only have one district, one or two districts um, that, that are participating. So pretty much um, for the majority of you, you will not have any money in here. This is not milk only. I have had questions about that. Sales to adults. This would be payments for lunch and breakfast meals. Um, and you can, you would put that under school lunch or breakfast if that's when they're getting their meal, um, or it would be a la carte. And that's where you would put that. And catering would be put in here as well. Next, we have loans and interest. Your child nutrition bank account may be an interest bearing account. The revenue would go here, but only listed in the total section. So right here where it's green. The state revenue match and federal reimbursement. We will talk about those in the next slide. So I'm gonna move down to other income. This would be SCA funds, equipment grant, anything other than meal revenue. So your state revenue match and federal reimbursement are, only, are set aside for meals that you are, um, that the students are partaking in. So it could be P, um, like PEBT, some of that revenue we had, we've given out as well. You may have outside grants um, that you've gotten income from that would be put here as well. And you would put that income into the appropriate category. If it was primarily for school lunches, you would put um, the amount there, school breakfast and so forth. Um, you may have to, you, you may be using it in multiple, so you can in a multiple categories. So you're gonna wanna split that money up accordingly. And the reason why we tell you to do that is because, because all of this funnels at the end into a, at the end of this report to a meal, meal per cost. And we wanna make sure you, the revenue and expenses are going into the right program. That way you get the best, um, the most accurate meal per cost. Then we have rebates. If you had a rebate check for chicken nuggets, you would most likely put that under school lunch on the rebate line as this normally is a lunch item, unless you're serving chicken nuggets for breakfast. Cause you know, kids would probably like that. <laughs> Maybe a little cost, costly, but you never know. <laughs> Um, notice the worksheet is, in, is color coded. Green means you can enter data. Yellow, it's locked. And red, there is no data needed. And that's locked as well. I will point out that if you have been using this, this spreadsheet, 
Um, I just made a change this morning. So if you go on the website, um, you're going to get the new report, the new worksheet. The only thing I opened up that wasn't there before is school breakfast for the state revenue match. So we've now opened that up so you can split up your, your breakfast and your lunch. Okay, now we're going to move on to the state revenue match and federal reimbursement. The state revenue match and federal reimbursement dollar amounts can be found in CNP web under the sponsor summary section payment tab. I have a screen, the screenshot um, is here for you to see. The first one we will go over is, is the match column and I've highlighted in yellow there for you, that column. This is the amount of money you are receiving from the state of Maine for your breakfast and lunch meals. And it is combined into one lump sum. Each batch number listed may contain more than one month of reimbursement. And I'm pointing to the batch, batch right here where this arrow is. You will need to open up the line to confirm the month listed for payment. So you're gonna click this little arrow right here. Once you do that, it will pop down and tell you what month um, your reimbursement check is for. On the payment tab, the amounts are combined, but on the claims tab, you can see them broken out. And we're gonna go there in a minute. Also note that, that the date listed is not the date that Maine has issued your reimbursement money. So this column here. Claim submissions must be approved um, at, at the sponsor level, the filer and approver by the end of day on the 8th of each month. Payments are then issued between the 12th and the 15th of each month. I just wanted to make sure that was pointed out for you. Now we'll move to the claims tab in CMP web to see the amounts broken out for breakfast and lunch for the state match category. The summary shown here is found on the claims tab by clicking on the dollar icon. Lunch is listed first and I have boxes in the state of Maine reimbursement. Listed is $64.40 for reduced meals and $9,259.25 for lunch paid meals for a total of $9,326.65. This amount can now be entered in the worksheet on the state revenue match line for school lunch. The same process is used for breakfast. Um, and those totals are listed for breakfast right here. And when you add those up, the total is 3,336.80. This amount is entered on the state revenue match line for breakfast. Next, we'll look at the federal reimbursement. The federal reimbursement is broken out into lunch on top, and I've highlighted that here for you, and breakfast below. And you're going to do the same thing um, here as well. You're then going to, <laughs> um, on this page, if you have any uh, fresh fruit and vegetable, um, that would also be listed here. This district that I did pull did not have any FFEP. Um, so that total would also be put on the spreadsheet, um, as well as the federally funded local foods would be on here as well. So here is the spreadsheet. Um, the school, the state revenue match is right here. And that's 9,323.65 and 3,336.80 for a total of 1,266.45. And that matches the number right here. So you're going to validate that those numbers are correct. And then the lunch and breakfast under the federal reimbursement, we have added those here. And then your total. Um, so the grand total of this for this month was 2008. 
16, 29, and you can validate that by looking here. Um, again, if you had any FFEP money, you would then put the money under federal reimbursement under the FFEP column. Um, the same thing um, you're gonna do for if you have CACFP, uh, if you do that after school snack program, um, you would go to the payment tab um, and put your amount in there as well. Um, and same for summer. So it's the same process for those. Oh, and if you had after school snack, that would be listed on your, on here as well. So that would be listed. Okay, um, I also wanna note um, that this note, there is a notes box right here. And I would encourage you, uh, if you're getting multiple revenue streams that you're putting in other income in this line right here, you may want to list those in the note section. Um, that way you can easily see, okay, you know, the amount that I have listed under school lunch was from SCA funds and a grant that I received from full plates, full potential per se. So just so you can keep track, it's an easy place to keep track of. The majority of this worksheet is locked, um, but we did give you access to this note section for you to make notes. Okay. Oh, and I actually, I'm gonna go back one more. I also just want to reiterate in CNP web, the payment tab, this is, this is what you are going to be getting um, for your claims reimbursement check from us. So this is what you should be confirming with your business office on um, when you're getting those checks, um, this, this here. And like I said, when you drop these, these arrows down, if you end up having to do a revision um, and it's paid out, you know, a, a month is paid out in the following month, um, it's gonna list, list everything for you. So you can actually um, see what your total payment is because um, it might be different than what is listed on your claims tab because you're not gonna see revisions. Um, the revisions are listed, but it's not gonna be as clean as looking here. Okay, our next section, is, oh, oh, yep, our next, next, <laughs> sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, our next section is uh, expenses. Okay, for this section, you're gonna need to get the detailed expense report from your business manager um, by month that you're completing this worksheet. This is gonna break down the total expenses that you've incurred by category, hopefully by category. So you've got food, labor and benefits, equipment less than 300, that would be like small wares. Equipment more than 300 would be like an oven or you know now it's really should be like over 5,000 um, because I don't think you can buy any piece of equipment for under a thousand at least. So that would be um, listed here. And then other would be um, would be like um, your telephone, your um, I had this written down and I can't remember what it was. Your telephone, your um, non foods, like all your other maintenance and fees, like it would be all your other expenses that are not listed here. One second. Indirect cost. This would be if your district used a formula to determine and charge you for overhead costs like uh, heat, gas, electricity. Um, most schools, I don't think we have any schools in Maine um, that that applies to. So for the most part, there wouldn't be anything, anything listed there. So we just talked about each of these titles here. And then as you can see, just like up top, we have each program listed across. 
<clears throat> there are so many ways to break down <clears throat> this is, and it's hard to all combine it into one webinar on its own. Um, we're going to dive deeper into these during my open office hours, which I'll talk about later. Um, if you're reporting revenue under each category, um, you must show expenses. So that's just another key thing to keep in mind. Um, I believe the system will give in CMP web will give you an error, um, an error there. So we're going to take this kind of simple. Um, and again, I want to also stress stress that you may already have a tool in place for this, for um, breaking this stuff out. And that's great. That's fine. So this is for somebody that's brand new that doesn't know um, quite how to manage their expenses and revenue. Um, um, that's that's really what we're what we're looking at here. Um, so on a simple note, I personally would start with your FFEP if you have if you're participating in the fresh fruits and vegetable program. And because you've already reported your breakdown of food, labor, and other on your claims tab in CNP Web. So you would then take those amounts and plop them in your food expenses, your labor, and probably um, if you end the other category right here. So if you're participating in CACFP in summer, again, you've probably already broken out these totals and can be added to each of the columns um, under each, um, each category right here. The after school snack program, we have provided you with a daily record form. Um, and the, on that form, it breaks down the cost for you. So you can actually use that form and that's on our website um, to actually put your food expenses for the month um, and labor um, and other right there. The a la carte can be a little more, can get a little more um, tricky. <laughs> um, your smart snacks are, are an easy food expense to, to know. Um, I, I would recommend on each invoice that you break out your a la carte expenses. Um, and that way it's easier um, when you're doing your reporting. Um, and also have an expense line called a la carte on your detailed expense report. If you're serving second meals, you would need to know your meal, meal cost to pull that number out of your total food expenses. So that's where it gets a little bit trickier. Um, school breakfast, this can be as simple as taking the number of meals served um, and breaking that, um, and how much break and the how and how much your breakfast meal costs and putting the total under the food and other, and then your caught the cost of a napkin straw spoon for each meal obviously would go under other. So again, with breakfast, you would just need to know your number of meals and then how much your breakfast meal per meal cost um, is. You could use that. Um, the labor piece, if you do not have a breakdown of labor and benefit costs for each program. You can take the total number of meals for each program and then get that percentage for, then, then turn that in, into the percentage for each program and then take that percent and times it by your remaining labor expenses to break that out. But just remember, and you can do the same thing for food expense, but just remember if you've already pulled some of the, some of that total from your, uh, from the other categories like fresh fruit and vegetable or snack, you're gonna want to take that money out of the grand of your of your total expenses for that month when you do your percentage for lunch and breakfast. And I know that's a lot, <laughs> and there are multiple ways, um, especially direct labor. There are many ways that you can um, get more in depth and detailed, um, so it's more precise. Um, and we can talk about some of that stuff in the in the office hours as well. So there's also a income and loss section of the worksheet and I've um, copied that for you right here. Um, this worksheet will automatically, automatically calculate the totals for you and give you your income and loss for each program.
It also has an average meal per cost. And the average meal per cost is located at the bottom of the worksheet. So by entering your number of meals served for the month of reporting, an, an average meal cost is determined for your lunch, for after school snacks and school breakfast. All the calculations are done for you behind the scenes and the after school summer program as well. You also have, the spreadsheet also has um, each month um, I'm sorry, it has the fund balance, the checkbook balance um, section. Your spreadsheet that you're, the spreadsheet that you're using should be matching the report from your business manager accountant that detailed expense and revenue. That's the goal. So this fund balance, checkbook balance, at the end of the year, this all should be matching. Again, all months are combined automatically to the year end tab where you can then put the numbers into your annual financial report. The, my open office hours will focus on this, on this worksheet and get as detailed as you need. Um, keep, wa out, keep watch for my next set of open office hours after these, as we'll talk about additional financial management topics and tools to use. If you have one in mind, a topic um, or a tool, um, send it to me and we can add it to um, add it to the list as well. So January, February, and March from one to two, um, if you send me an email, I will then send you a link to the meeting if you wish to attend. And that was a lot to share in one webinar. Um, and I will take questions um from this webinar there's probably a lot <laughs> oh good there's not a lot um there's some okay and just please keep in mind that you know in my open office hours we can again talk more um more in detail and, and answer more specific questions that you might have paula what's our first question jody how do we determine what percentages to use when splitting funds between categories when inputting other funds like grants that are used program wide so my so i would do a percent my my what i would do is you kind of need to figure out what your percentage um if you take uh, just like i suggested for one of the other ones you can take your total meals of breakfast and lunch um and then get the percentage of that and then times use that percentage to split up that income coming in. Um, unless you know specifically that a grant may be just for breakfast. So obviously that grant would all go in into, into the breakfast account. And also note that each month that you're seeing your program loss, if you have, if you deposited a check for $10,000 in one month, but it's gonna really last you the whole year. You're gonna, it's gonna offset each month, but the year end total is gonna give you a more accurate, um, an accurate number. So David has confirmed that there are no schools currently allowed to do indirect costs. Thank you, David. If you have questions in regards to indirect cost, I will um, have you contact David Hartley as, He's the man behind the scenes. <laughs> um, so, and I'm sure he has a big smile on his face right now. <laughs> um, Paula, next question, please. Is equipment under $300 supplies? And what if you purchase supplies, but the total is over $300? Yeah. So supplies, like, are you talking like spoodles? And so stuff like that, small wear. Um, that would be um, under the 300. Um, if you're talking supplies like aprons um, and stuff like, like, so how, if they, I guess the equipment would be things that last longer that, that are not disposable, I guess would be a, a good example. So any, anything that's not gonna dispose of <laughs> within a year or so, um, that would be under equipment like spoodles and 
um, spatulas or sheet pans. So I would do it as an individual item. Um, if the individual items are under 300, you would put that there. And then the bigger, obviously like an oven and stuff, that's for your all programs. So that's what would be the over 300. Can you use a percentage to figure out breakfast and lunch, like 30% versus 70%? So you can, It's and that's what we kind of told you to do at the end of last year because, um, because we really didn't talk about the spreadsheet. I'm not sure that's the best practice because you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of your program uh, for good financial management. You really want to know what your percentages are and what your costs are. And I know it's going to take a lot of work, um, but I think once you set the tools in place and the additional tools to help you with this worksheet, it's going to be a lot easier in the long run and you're going to have accurate information. So I... I'm not telling you you can't, it's just not back, but it wouldn't be best practice in my opinion. Do employee benefit expenses go under direct labor expenses or other? No, it would go, your labor and benefits would go under, under the labor and benefits category. Let me just if I can go back, go back to that. Right. So you're, it says direct labor, but it would be, it is labor and benefits would go under, that's what you would be splitting up with school lunch, breakfast, after school. And really the only, I mean, how I had done it is I did a, a, an analysis, a labor analysis. So I had um, my workers um, actually take a spreadsheet and actually um, logged how much time they spent on on breakfast, on lunch, after school snacks, FFVP. That way I could break it all out um, and get my labor labor right. Because you have different schools, you have some people that are part-time, some people that are full-time, and um, there's just a lot of difference there. So, but that's just one example and it doesn't mean you have to go that deep either. But it would be labor and benefits combined. So technically, what you usually see on it on the detailed um, expense form that you get from the business office accountant, um, your labor and benefits is all one section. So you would just take the total labor and benefits, whatever that amount is, and then split that amount up into each category program. No more questions at the moment. No more questions at the moment. All right, well, I will um, like to, again, encourage you to um, to sign up for my op open office hours. Um, and then also you can contact me um, outside of those open office hours uh, and I can we can chat as well. And I just wanna thank you all for attending. Oh, and this just one, I forgot to say at the beginning, this webinar has been recorded and it will be posted next by next week, sometime next week. next week. And the slides will be posted as well on our website. And thank you very much. And you all have a great rest of the day.